In this example, we're going to combine together the two main ideas we've learned for the normal distribution in this section, namely how to use normal CDF in order to find the area, right? So using normal CDF to find the area, the percent, the probability, or using inverse norm in order to find the z-score and x-value. Now when we look at this particular curve, this is the standard normal curve. Now it says so right up here in the instructions, but actually you could have figured that out just by looking at it because it has a center of zero, it has inflection points at one and negative one, which is where the standard deviation falls. And also, even more blatantly obviously, there's z right, written on the bottom axis, z equals z equals. The z curve by definition is the standard normal curve. So the z curve has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, always never changes no matter what for the z-curve. Now we're going to have to find these two areas here and this z-score here. And it's a trickier problem than we've run into before because in this particular problem it's not symmetric. It's not centered. Excuse me, the white empty area in the center in the middle is not centered around the mean. In other words it's not symmetric like the curve is. So that's going to make it a trickier problem for us. So we have to figure out what we can find first. Well, if we look over here on the left tail, we can see that we already know a z-score and we're looking for the area that corresponds to that z-score. So if we go back to our handy dandy chapter seven decision matrix, if you already know a z-score, you're in this middle column right here, and you're looking for the area in the left-hand tail, which means you're gonna be using normal CDF, left comma right comma zero comma one, or lower comma upper zero and one. All right, so let me label that. Okay, so normal CDF, left comma right comma zero comma one. So I know that I need the left hand edge of what we shaded. But remember that when it decreases without bound, when it goes forever um, infinitely in the left direction, we use negative one E99 right there. It's right on the bottom of the decision matrix as a note. So we're gonna use negative one E99 and then we want the right-hand edge, which was given, which is negative 2.350, 0, and 1, because it's a z-curve, and those things never change for z-curves. Now I'm going to go grab a calculator to do this. So here's my calculator. It's a little bit different than what you might be used to seeing. I have the screen of the calculator over here on the right, and the buttons over here on the left to make it larger for you to see. So I want to go to the distribution menu. I want to pick number two. So I'm just going to press two and it'll automatically go to that. Now the lower is the left hand edge, which is negative one E99. My upper was negative 2.35. Be sure you use the little negative sign down here in parentheses underneath the three button. So negative 2.35. The mean, the mu was zero and the standard deviation is one. And then I go down to paste, and because it's a paste, I actually have to press enter again and get it to run it. And it tells me it's 0 .0094, roughly. Now the problem says to round to three decimal places, so I'm actually going to round that answer to 0 .009. So I'm losing a little bit of accuracy, but that's what was asked for in the problem. Okay, so now we know that the area on the left is 0 .009. So now I need the middle area, so area in the middle. But remember that the entire curve adds up to one. So if the whole curve makes one, and I know that this little gray portion over here is 0 .009, and I know this one over here is 0.115, I could add the two of them together and take them away from one. Or if you will, I could just say it's one minus 0 .009, but also minus 0.115. So I want to take that those two numbers both away from 1. So 1 minus 0 0.009 minus oops, 0 0.09. Now every problem you do like this is going to be slightly different. I mean we're, we're sort of doing a little bit of a brain teaser here. You have to figure out what you know and what you don't know and then calculate um, so it might be the case that you could find a z-score first, or you could find an area first, or you could find a, right? So every problem is going to be slightly different. 
So in this particular one, we found this left-hand area first, then we found the middle area next, and now I'm going to go find this z-score over here. So I could figure out that middle area was 0.876. All right, so now I need to find the z-score on the right. Okay, well, I'm looking for a z-score. Hmm. Well, according to my decision matrix, if I want to find a z-score, I'm in this middle row right here, I want to find a z-score, I'm going to need inverse norm, left tail area 0 and 1, unless I know more information than I do in this particular problem, which is far over here on the right. But I don't know that, so I'm going to be working on the left-hand side. So I need inverse norm, left area, 0 and 1. So this will be inverse norm, left area, 0 and 1. So the hard part is just the left area. Well, the left area is everything that's to the left of this z-score. So that would be the 0 0.009 and the 0.876, this 0.876 in the middle. So I need to find 0.115 or 0.009 plus 0.876 and add the two of them up first. So let me grab a calculator. 0 0.009 plus 0 0.876 makes 0 0.885. So I'm going to take inverse norm 0 0.885 comma 0 comma 1. Now the 0.885 could also be found a different way. We know that this gray tail over here is 0.115. And since that's on the right, then everything else is on the left. So you take 1 and subtract away 0.115, and you'll have 0.885. See, So it'll work out that way, too. OK, so we're going to need the calculator to do this calculation for us. So let me go grab the calculator, go to Distribution menu, number 3. I'm going to tell it 0.885 is my area. Remember that the calculator always needs the left area. And then I'm going to leave 0 and 1 in and go down to paste and press enter. And since it's a paste, I'll actually have to press enter again and get it to run it. So I get 1.200. So there we have it. The Z is approximately 1.200. All right, that's how to do that particular example. And then remember that every problem you come across like this won't be exactly like this one was. Some of them will be, but sometimes you'll know this z-score in this area and you'll have to figure everything else out. Or you'll know the area in the middle, but not the area in the tails. Or right, Every problem will be slightly different. But the idea is to use your decision matrix and find the parts that you can find and then use the fact that the areas add up to one to find the missing areas and then keep going from there.